I do get a lot of comments and questions about should I wait for solid state batteries, so here goes. So you're waiting for a thousand mile range affordable EV. Yeah. I have to tell you now, it's going to be an awful long wait. In the last 100 years of petrol and diesel motoring, nobody ever made a petrol or diesel car mass produced that could, and for them, all it involved was installing a bigger fuel tank. So why is everyone convinced that they do need a thousand miles if they buy an EV? Well, I'm Dave and I'm looking into what we can realistically expect in the next 10 or 20 years of EV development. What if running out of battery in your electric car was something you just, well, never even thought about? Today's EVs are finally hitting a respectable 300 miles, some much more, but the battery that will truly end range anxiety for good is right around the corner. We're not talking about a tiny incremental bump, we're talking about a technology that could give you a 500 mile or a 1000 mile range and recharge in the time it takes to grab a coffee. This isn't science fiction anymore. This is the very real promise of the solid state battery. It's on its way and it is about to change everything. Now let's get one thing straight. The electric cars on the road today are simply amazing, especially compared to 10 years ago. Just think where petrol cars were 10 years after Henry Ford made the Model T. Yeah, they were still making the Model T, which went on in production for 19 years. But the average new EV today offers over 300 miles of range, which for the record is more than enough for almost anyone's daily commute. For most people, most of the time, range anxiety is already a thing of the past, but it hasn't been eliminated from their minds. There's still that little voice in the back of your head. And many have felt that anxiety on a road trip when the next charge is 50 miles away and your range is dropping faster than you planned. And for good reason. The real world isn't a perfect laboratory. Cruising on the motorway at 70 mile an hour can easily knock 10% off your range. And if it's a cold winter's day, the power needed to do that and keep you and your battery warm can slash your range by a staggering 20 or 30%. It's just the facts of what we've got. Now suddenly, that comfortable 300 mile buffer doesn't feel quite so comfortable. Plus, even with the fastest DC charges out there, you're still looking at a 20 to 30 minute stop to get a meaningful charge. Now, it's a massive improvement, don't get me wrong, but it's not quite up to the five minute petrol station fill up we're all used to. Well, these are the last nagging pain points, the final hurdles keeping millions of drivers from going electric. To really kickstart the EV revolution into a higher gear, we don't just need batteries that are good enough. We need a real leap forward. That leap is solid state. So what exactly is a solid state battery? Well, the name kind of gives it away. The battery in your current EV, your phone, your laptop, your power tools, all use lithium ion technology. It has a liquid electrolyte inside. Think of this liquid as a shuttle, allowing lithium ions to move backwards and forwards between the positive and negative side of the battery, cathode and the anode, to store or release energy. It works, but that liquid has some serious drawbacks. It's the most flammable bit of the battery. It's sensitive to heat and cold, and it takes up a lot of space that otherwise could be used to store more energy. Solid state batteries, as the name implies, get rid of the liquid entirely. They replace it with a solid material, and this is often a razor thin sheet of ceramic or special polymer. And this one change unlocks a flood of game changing benefits. First, most importantly, energy density. By ditching the bulky, useless liquid, uh, you can now pack in way more energy storing material. Solid state designs allow for the use of a much bigger and better anode. That's the bit that does store energy. This enables a huge jump in how much total energy you can store. While today's best lithium ion batteries top out around 270 watt hours per kilogram, solid state prototypes are already hitting four or 500, and in some lab tests, even over 700 watt hours per kilogram. For you, that means a battery the same size as the one already in a 300 mile EV could suddenly take you six or 700 miles. And one car recently completed 749 miles out on the road and not in the laboratory. More on that one in a moment. Then you could simply put in a larger battery and you get your magical thousand miles. Job done, but oh, read on. It's not that easy. 
The second massive win is charging speed. In today's batteries, that liquid electrolyte is slow and it can degrade and form damaging spiky structures called dendrites if you try to charge too fast. They're limited in charging speed. Solid state electrolytes are very much tougher. Quantum Scape, a leader in the field, already has cells that can charge from 10% to 80% just 15 minutes. BYD, Huawei, both have demonstrated batteries that can get down to 5 minutes. That's adding hundreds of miles of range in the time it takes to use a restroom and dash back to your car. That's not an improvement, it's a revolution in convenience. Mm, sorry about the play on words. And finally, safety. The most flammable bit of the battery is uh, centred around the liquid electrolyte. It's by no means a fire hazard, but by replacing it with a non-combustible solid, the risk of what's called thermal runaway is virtually eliminated. These batteries are just fundamentally more stable, can operate in a wider range of temperatures, making them safer and more reliable. More range, faster charging, better cold weather performance and way more safety. It's what the entire EV industry has been chasing for over a decade. To really get how brilliant this is, let's check out the science for just a minute. Picture a normal lithium-ion battery. You've got a cathode, positive side, the anode, negative side, and that's usually graphite, and a fl flimsy plastic separator sheet in between. The whole thing is soaked in that liquid electrolyte. When you charge it, lithium ions swim from the cathode through the liquid, cross the separator and wedge themselves onto the graphite anode. Well, the issue is, its process is messy. Over time, that liquid will break down. And if you charge too fast, the lithium ions can get frantic and start building up on the anode surface, forming sharp needle-like crystals called dendrites. If a dendrite grows long enough to poke through the separator and touch the cathode, you get a short circuit. Best case, your battery dies. Worst case, it could catch fire. Now here's the solid state design. The basic idea is exactly the same, but the parts are way more advanced. The liquid and the plastic separator, they're gone. In their place is a single ultra-thin layer of a solid material, like a specially engineered ceramic. This solid electrolyte is designed to be a superhighway for lithium ions, letting them pass right through, but it's also a total roadblock for electrons, which prevents short circuits. Its most important job, though, is to be an impenetrable wall. The physical hardness of the ceramic separator physically blocks dendrites from ever forming and punching through. This is what makes it possible to throw out the bulky graphite anode, anode and replace it with something far better, like a hyper-efficient strip of pure lithium metal. In a regular battery, using lithium metal would be an absolute disaster. Dendrites would form almost instantly. But with the solid separator standing guard, it actually works perfectly well. So when you charge a solid state battery, lithium ions just move through this solid barrier and place themselves neatly onto the lithium metal anode. No wasted space, no flammable liquid, and no way for dangerous dendrites to grow. It's just a simpler, more elegant, and way more powerful design. By the way, if you're finding this tech breakdown as fascinating as I do, please hit the subscribe button. Now, this isn't just some theory stuck in a university laboratory. This is a multi-billion dollar race with some of the biggest names in tech and auto sprinting towards the finish line. Toyota has been talking about solid state batteries for years and holds over a thousand patents on the tech, but we've heard this for decades and have yet to see anything that they can actually use. Maybe this promise of 2026 or 2027 will finally come true. In the US, companies like QuantumScape and Solid Power are making huge moves. QuantumScape, backed by Volkswagen, has been shipping its first B-sample prototype cells to car makers for real-world testing. They're on the roads. Solid Power, which is partnered with Ford and BMW, is also scaling up. BMW has already put Solid Power cells into a test vehicle, and Samsung recently joined their development team. That's a major signal that commercialization is getting much closer. But maybe the most stunning report came from Mercedes-Benz. In early 2025, they started road testing an electric EQS saloon. That's big car, with solid-state batteries from their partner Factorial Energy. 
A few months later, a press release claimed that a prototype EQS drove an astonishing 749 miles on a single charge during a real-world road test from Germany to Sweden. Yeah, on real roads. And it still had 85 mile of range left at the end. That suggests a potential range of over 830 miles. A number that just demolishes any argument about range anxiety and slaughters the petrol or hybrid S-types. Mercedes expects to have production cars with this exact technology before the end of the decade. There's a hint as to when they're available. Well, even Chinese manufacturers are all in. CATL, the world's biggest battery maker, is aiming for small-scale production around 2027. Companies like Sherry and Sunwoda have also shown off prototypes with incredible energy density figures, with plans for mass production in uh, 27 to 29 time frame. Race is on. It's heating up faster than ever. So if this technology is so amazing, why don't we have it already? Why wait? Well, as with any game-changing invention, the journey from lab to your home is packed with huge challenges. The single biggest hurdle is manufacturing at scale. It's one thing to make a few perfect cells in a pristine laboratory. It's a whole different beast to produce millions of them every day. It's all down to reliability and affordability and speed. The processes are brand new. They often require new machineries that are still being perfected. For instance, creating those ultra-thin ceramic electrolytes without any microscopic flaws is incredibly difficult at scale. Another simple example is Tesla. They invented the 4680 battery cell. This is not solid state. This is just a much better traditional cell. And that was way back in 2020 and it worked, but they've taken five years to get that into mass production. What with scaling problems and building new factories and production lines. Now, admittedly, they had a delay for a year or two during COVID. Still, even that upgrade from a similar cell took a long time. Well, that leads right to the second problem, cost. Right now, estimates suggest solid-state batteries are anywhere from three to ten times more expensive to produce than today's lithium-ion batteries. The raw materials and com complex manufacturing all add up. Until companies figure out how to make these at gigafactory scale, they'll likely only ever appear in high-end luxury EVs, like the Mercedes. Finally, while the solid electrolyte is great at stopping dendrites, the science isn't still 100% solved. Keeping a perfect stable connection between the solid electrolyte and the solid electrodes is a huge, huge engineering puzzle, especially as the battery expands and contracts while charging. Even tiny gaps can stop the flow of ions and kill the battery's performance. The researchers are working on clever fixes, but perfecting it for a battery that needs to last for a decade and hundreds of thousands of miles and be able to mass produce is no small task. So the year of the solid state battery isn't a distant dream. It's happening now. We're watching it move from theory to reality with prototypes on the road doing things that sounded like science fiction just five years ago. Now the road ahead is still tough. Costs have come down and manufacturing needs to ramp up in a huge way. So let's get realistic. We'll probably see the first niche high-end cars with solid state batteries in any numbers around about 2027, 2028. More affordable family size EVs by about 2030 and the very budget end after that. So your budget model with 500 mile range is likely to be eight or 10 years away. But make no mistake, this technology is the end game for electric cars that might eliminate range anxiety forever. See, 500 mile plus range and charging in five minutes is exactly what petrol and diesel car motorists have had for well over 50 years and still have to this day. And once people realise that, then range anxiety in an EV will finally be about the same as in a petrol car, pretty much nil. It's almost the final piece of the puzzle that will not only crush range anxiety, but completely rewrite what's possible for electric travel. The ultimate missing piece in all this is the charger to be able to do that charge in five minutes, and they're already here. 
I attended a trade exhibition at the NEC in Birmingham recently where 1,000 and even 1,400 kilowatt chargers were openly on display. Currently, these are aimed at commercial electric vehicle buses, lorries and vans, but they are also being used as a central hub to be able to operate four 250 kilowatt chargers for cars. They only need to flip a switch to output 1,000 kilowatts through one of those plugs. A 500 mile plus range is becoming the standard, 5 to 10 minute recharge becomes the norm that feels just like stopping for petrol. Safer, lighter, longer lasting battery. That's the future solid state promotes and promises, and it's a future that is finally solidly within our grasp. But what about the 1000 mile range? There are going to be some motorists who will still demand that, and that would be easily available for them. If there was any actual demand, you see, this is the reason why petrol and diesel car manufacturers in over a hundred years of making cars have never made one with that big a fuel tank at a thousand mile range, not in mass. There's simply no demand because 500 miles range will easily cover any single journey you and I are ever likely to make in our entire lifetime. And by the way, if it falls short, then you just nip into a petrol station and you top it up for five minutes. The average motorist in the UK never goes on a non-stop journey that would flatten a battery with a 500 mile range, never in their entire life. As for a thousand mile journey, that's pure fantasy. Now, the only exception is those that tow caravans, boats or trailers. But even there, a 500 mile range that drops to half when towing those three or four times a year it's quite adequate if you can just nip in and top up in five minutes, like you do at the moment with petrol. But I want to hear from you. Does a 500 plus mile range of five minutes charge finally convince you that EVs are ready for everyone? What's the magic number for you when it comes to range and charging? Let me know what you think down in the comments. And if you enjoyed this outlook into the future of cars, Make sure you hit the like button, subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss our next deep dive. Thanks very much for watching. See you on the next one. I'm Dave.